Christians in the U.S. are losing it. And why? I'd like to address that. Before I do, I'm going to share quickly just some announcements based on what Legault said yesterday as well. This evening, we are continuing with prayer. We started Tuesday morning at 10. Yesterday evening, we had a wonderful time in prayer. A good number attended or joined in on Zoom. And this evening, I'm hoping that even more will be joining. We want to dedicate this entire year to the Lord, especially as things are beginning to uh, unfold in our country, in our city. We need wisdom from above. We don't want to act on our own. We want to depend on our Lord, and the best, to, best way to do that is to dedicate ourselves in prayer. Uh, the course is for women, the course rather, for women. What is Reformed Theology? We'll start next week, Thursday, January 14th at 7.30 p.m. So ladies, I'm encouraging you to join us. The Zoom number will be sent to you early next week so that you'll be able to um, Join us without any problems. And for those of you who have not downloaded Zoom, please contact us and we'll help you with that as well. Membership course will begin in the early week of February. And um, I, I don't know how to say this. I just want everyone who is part of LCF, who regularly attends, who is baptized and loves the Lord to be a member. No one should be left out. And so I'm encouraging you to join that membership course. It's a four-week course throughout uh, February. Now, based on uh, Legault's announcement yesterday, because of the new lockdown restrictions, we as a church will not be able to gather this Saturday. And for the next little while, at least I, I would imagine five Saturdays. What we're doing is we're going to be meeting tomorrow evening. And unfortunately, uh, there are no more places available. So what I, if you do want to take a chance, add your name to the waiting list. And if someone cancels, we will contact you. Um, so places are all taken. Those who had signed up for the Saturday gatherings, just basically we transfer them to the Friday. And they've confirmed their participation. Um, so we will meet for the last time tomorrow evening. And then the message will be uploaded as usual Sunday morning. As far as the coming weeks are concerned, as of next Wednesday, I will let you know what direction we are taking so that you'll be informed as how you can join the gathering online, right? Um, that's it for now. That's all the announcements. And of course, um, those of you who are giving faithfully, um, whether it be for missions, whether it be for benevolence, for those who are in need, or whether it be just for the ongoing ministries of the LCF, we are grateful to God for every single one of you. And for those of you who cannot, but are supporting with prayer and with your participation, and especially for the furtherance of the gospel, we praise God for you as well. Yesterday, there was a massive protest in Washington. Hundreds of thousands of pro-Trump supporters um, filled the streets. And there was a stop the seal, a steal rather, a protest that took place. Many of them feel, all of them feel, that the vote uh, for the presidency was fraudulent and that um, the election was stolen from Trump. And so they were there protesting. Many people um, who are in the Republican, the GOP party, um, they agreed with that kind of narrative and they too were supporting this peaceful protest. But amongst those that were peaceful, there were hundreds that uh, scaled the walls of Capitol Hill and were able to break into Capitol Hill. Now that is suspect. I mean, the United States spends billions of dollars on security. They're able to detect any kind of infiltration um, from the outside, but yet they were unable to secure Capitol Hill. That really is suspect, but that's another point. And uh, now whether there were provocateurs from the left who infiltrated the Trump ranks and these protesters and and started this whole scaling of the wall. We don't know, and I'm not interested in that. It's That could be. But there were people, genuine Christians, who were part of that group who broke into Capitol Hill. And um, they, in fact, consecrated the breach um, into Capitol Hill to Jesus Christ. That's what they did. Now, you say, are you sure about this? Yes, I am, because you can watch an interview 
of a man called Leo Kelly. It's on YouTube. And he explains how he was one of those who decided to enter Capitol Hill. And uh, most of them were unarmed. I mean, there may have been some who were armed, but most of them were unarmed except for a few sticks and whatnot. And he just wanted to see what was going on. And finally, he entered the Senate. There he was on the Senate floor with hundreds of others. And at a certain point, uh, one person, one of them decided to say, hey, let's pray. And so he basically dedicated this uh, unlawful entry of Capitol Hill to Jesus Christ. And he, you know, this individual says, you know, uh, he felt justified in what he did. Because he said, look, no one is listening to us. The judicial system is not listening to us. The legislation is not listening to us. The legislators are not listening to us. No one is listening to us. So what else could we do? And so they decided to breach Capitol Hill. Uh, so we have here Christians who feel justified uh, in breaking into Capitol Hill and in breaking the law. And they feel that this was an act that was needed at this time. And they felt dedicated, or rather they felt the need to dedicate this unlawful act to Jesus Christ. And so the whole thing made me think, uh, is this really in alignment with God's will? Well, let's read in Luke chapter 9. We read something very interesting because God's word always gives us the answers. And in Luke chapter 9, we read about Jesus. Now he's making his way to Jerusalem and he needed to go through Samaria. It would have been a shorter path to take. And this is what he, we read in Luke 9, verses 51 to 55. And as the time approached for Jesus to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. And he sent messengers on ahead who went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem. And when the disciples, James and John, saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. So here's John and James. They were disciples of Christ and felt they were justified in calling fire from heaven. Now, did they have the authority? Of course not, but Jesus had the authority and Jesus had the power to do that. I mean, he turned stones into bread and he walked on water. He certainly could have called fire from heaven. This was his world. He created it and he had every right to go to Samaria and go through Samaria. But Jesus decides to not push back, but it takes the longer path to Jerusalem. It's interesting, isn't it? That he did not demand his way. Christians, historically speaking, never demanded their way. In fact, Jesus teaches if one strikes you on one side of the cheek, offer him the other. If someone takes your coat, give him your jacket. And throughout history, that's what Christians, genuine Christians, did. You have those who were the crusaders and and those who carried out wars in the name of Jesus and carried a flag with a cross and so forth. But that's not the spirit of Christ. You see, in fact, one version adds these words that Jesus said to his disciples. Do not want, do not know what kind of spirit you are of. Do not know. In other words, they were not governed by the spirit of Christ. They were governed by an angry spirit. And these protesters that scaled the walls, who were Christians, who are Christians, and from how they spoke, they spoke as Christians. They were not of the spirit of Christ. They did not move in alignment with God's will. This was not God's uh, prompting. They did things on their own. This is not, not, nothing else but misplaced zeal and a failure to appreciate the sovereignty of God. Biden is the president of the United States of America. And based on the vote in Georgia, two other Democrats are now senators. And that means that the Senate is primarily Democrat. Majority. And the majority of the House is Democrat. That means all three, the presidency, 
the House, and the Senate. All three are filled with Democrats. That means there are going to be new laws, such as massive uh, amnesty, immigration amnesty for illegal immigrants, such as new gender laws, um, abortions that will be funded not only in the States, but all over the world because the Democrats are running the show. Is this God's will? Absolutely. And all these false prophets and all these pastors and who are basically leading their congregation into error are not appreciating the sovereignty of God. And it's really very disturbing because now the legacy that Trump will be known by will not be the many good decisions that he as a Republican president took. All right? There are good decisions that were made. But he'll be remembered by this particular fiasco. This breach of Capitol Hill will always mark his presidency. Thanks to the false prophets that he surrounds himself with, such as Paula White and the others, Thanks to the pastors who have no clue as to what scripture says. Thanks to these Christians who are misled and have a misplaced zeal and have no understanding of the sovereignty of God. This fundamental doctrine of scripture that is all over scripture. God does what he pleases. That's what God's word says. Doesn't mean we are to do nothing, absolutely not. I think of William Wilberforce. In 1780, this very rich aristocrat by the name of William Wilberforce in England became a parliamentarian, British parliamentarian, and he did it as a career move. He was an aristocrat, he had money, and why not? He would get some prestige from it. Then something unusual happened in 1785 converted to Christianity, genuine. He was a nominal Christian, but in 1785, he had a genuine conversion. He became a believer in Jesus Christ and a good friend of John Newton. John Newton was at one time, before becoming a pastor, a slave trader. He had ships and would go get slaves and bring them, these slaves, into England. And of course, following his conversion, he abandoned that career and became a pastor. William Wilberforce was convicted by the slave trade, uh, by the Holy Spirit regarding the slave trade, and he decided to do something about it. The problem was that all those in Parliament had heavy, heavy stakes in the slave trade. Many of them owned ships. All of them had investments and depended on the slave trade. The British economy depended on the slave trade. So he introduces a bill. He introduces it shortly after his conversion. Of course, he's ridiculed, mocked, he was hated, he was ostracized, he was the only one in Parliament. And yet, slowly, he just started to speak one to another. And through prayer and the support of godly men, he slowly started to make inroads. The bill was finally passed after main, multiple times of being knocked down. was finally passed in 1807. 22 years after it was first introduced. That's what godly men do. That's what a godly church does. That's what godly Christians do who are led by the Spirit of God. They don't pick up arms. They don't scale walls and break into Capitol Hill. That's not the way we move. And these pastors and, and, and President Trump as well who fueled all of this they're just an error. They don't know what kind of spirit is leading them. They're not depending on God. They're doing things on their own. As we enter 2022, 21 rather, we don't know what awaits us. We don't know the laws, the draconian laws that will be put into place. We don't know if we're, our liberties will be infringed and we're going to be having more difficulty just to carry out with our regular life. But whatever happens, we need to remember God is sovereign. That does not mean we stay quietly by and do nothing. 
doesn't mean we're simply like the Amish community and say nothing, do nothing, we don't get involved. It doesn't mean that. We do get involved. We do pray. We do get, we're engaged in the political scenario of our country. But we do it God's way. We honor his name. We do not take his name and drag it in the mud. Now Christians of the States are known by this act. Not in Canada only, but all over the world. These images, these shocking footages will be repeated over and over, showing Christians to be radical right wingers who are unable to just converse and talk and wait on the Lord and trust them as godly people should be doing. Our weapons are not of this world. They're not. They're not. Of, they won't, we don't fight flesh and blood. We have a different kind of warfare. And we need to learn that warfare by reminding ourselves first that our God is sovereign and he determines the course of history. May the Lord give us grace in 2021. Well, hopefully I'll see you this evening. Remember, no gathering this Saturday, only tomorrow night for those who've signed up already. God bless you.